checks and balances. The convention that created the Constitution of the United States was alive with political and philosophical debate. The delegates were seeking to translate the ambitious ideas that had sustained America's revolution into a new and workable form of government. Progress stalls, and the delegates are deadlocked over the fundamental question of just how people are to be represented in the new government. Two delegates from Connecticut, Roger Sherman and Oliver Ellsworth, propose a compromise to create two legislative bodies based on two different forms of representation. It becomes known to history as the Great Compromise. One body, the House of Representatives, will be based on population. The larger a state's population, the more representatives it will have. In the other body, the United States Senate, all states are equal. Each state, regardless of size, will have two senators. These two bodies of Congress are where the full range of perspectives in the country, no matter how different, can be resolved into the laws and policies that guide the nation. But what kind of legislative body should the new Senate be? How should it differ from the House? James Madison advocates a republic, a representative democracy, built on deliberation and informed debate. With the other framers, he envisions the Senate as the appropriate form for careful, extended, and deliberate consideration of the country's pressing issues. In Article I of the Constitution, delegates also create terms that differ in length between the House and Senate. Wild citizens have the opportunity to vote for their representatives every two years. Senators will be elected for six-year terms to create a higher level of experience among our national leaders and to lessen the immediate pressure of popular opinion. Senators will be elected by the legislatures of each state. But in the 20th century, with passage of the 17th Amendment, senators will be elected directly by the voters the Senate was designed, in part, to protect against the government moving too quickly, to stand up when senators feel it necessary against the emotions of the moment. In Article II, the Senate is given the unique power to provide its advice and consent on key actions of the President, such as proposed treaties and the President's nominees for cabinet positions, ambassadorships, Supreme Court justices, federal judges, and thousands of other civilian and military officials. The Senate and the House of Representatives share the power to declare war. Checks and balances. The Senate is created smaller than the House and is designed to proceed, in Madison's words, with coolness and wisdom. To this day, the principle of deliberation continues to shape the role and traditions of the United States Senate. But legislation today is complex and requires exhaustive effort on and off the floor. Senators work with staff and in Senate committee meetings to help shape new policy or analyze and refine existing legislation. They conduct research and hold policy meetings with experts, scholars, constituents, citizen coalitions, and other interested parties representing the dozens of viewpoints that might be involved in the consideration of a single bill. There's ongoing interaction with other senators, scheduled time for party caucuses, and interviews with the press to keep the public informed. Senators, along with House members, evaluate firsthand the state of America's military and foreign policy commitments and report back to their colleagues and the nation. Senate investigations have sparked some of the most profound turning points in the nation's political history as the probing questions of a Senate panel bring issues to light and help lead to change and reform. 
Spending time in their home states helps senators stay connected to their constituents. Here, senators meet with civic groups and community leaders, focus on emerging needs, report to voters on bills before Congress, and determine firsthand if their home state is being well served by the federal government. In locations across the state, citizens can turn to their senators' offices for help with individual problems and requests, or they can visit their senators on Capitol Hill. Members of the Senate are proud of their states and promote its image and standing on the national stage, whether protecting local landmarks, celebrating home team champions, or working with state officials to encourage the growth of new industries. Mr. President, I understand the Senator from Iowa's concerns and would be happy to work with him. There is an unmistakable tone to the U.S. Senate resonating in Senate language and traditions. But more than history is at play here, there's a collegial atmosphere fostered by the small size of the Senate and longer six-year terms that overlap. Only a third of the seats are up for election every two years. Senators, even those with well-known philosophical differences, often form strong friendships. Working closely together on several committee assignments, members develop expertise across a range of issues and gain an understanding of each other's specialties. Uh, my colleague from Wyoming just pointed out we've, we've missed uh, a good opportunity there in, in my view. In this relatively small group, a single senator can have significant influence on legislative outcomes. Although committee decisions carry a lot of weight, the size of the Senate allows individual members to consider and debate issues on the floor at many points in the legislative process. Senate procedures provide time for the voice of each senator to be heard. In the Senate, all states are equal, and all viewpoints, including those held by a minority of the Senate membership, are ensured a full hearing. Thus, the Senate's long tradition of nearly unlimited debate. Open, and at times, extended discussion of Senate business takes precedence over speed. The process is not always smooth. Senators can use the tactic of a filibuster, or continual open-ended discussion to prevent the Senate from voting. In order to protect debate or avoid deadlock, Senate rules stipulate that three-fifths of the Senate or 60 senators can vote for cloture, which ends debate and moves matters to a vote. If a bill passed by the Senate differs from the House version, a House and Senate Conference Committee negotiates a final version, which is then voted on by both bodies. <coughs> the Senate tradition of full debate has often moved the Senate and the entire nation toward compromise, at times on the most divisive issues of the day. Some of the most famous and compelling political debates in the history of the Republic have occurred on the Senate floor. Over the years, the expression of a full range of views, even those that will not carry the day, has allowed for deeper exploration of the issues. Much of our government rests on the principle of rule by the majority, but the framers of the Constitution were wary of too much power resting anywhere, including with the majority. That's why our individual freedoms are spelled out in the Bill of Rights, and why we have checks and balances woven into the design of the federal government, evident in the distinctly different roles of the House and Senate. 50 states, 100 desks, over 200 years of history. The United States Senate yields national leaders and legendary figures.
It's our form on our laws and policies. The judges and cabinet officers we install. The treaties we make with other countries. The direction we take as a nation.